Hi guys, uh, this is a video uh, to show you how to set up OneNote Classroom. Okay, so I'm going to go through our school um, 365 account to set that up. So um, I'm going to log in here really quick. So I'm going to pause my video and then I will come right back. Okay, so once I have logged into the 365 portal, um, you should see something like this. Okay, so these are all of the online 365 uh, things that you can do. Okay, so the one that we're going to be looking at is OneNote, but we're not going to use OneNote online. It's slightly different. We're going to use OneNote class. So this is up here. I'm not sure why it's not down with these other things. So um, perhaps yours is. Um, but mine is up here. So OneNote class is different than OneNote online. So do realize that. Um, there's a lot of more features that the, the class can do. It's definitely something you would set up in your classroom. If you're just sharing notebooks with different teachers, then that is something you can do on OneNote online. Okay, so I'm going to sign in okay and so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class notebook okay so this is a notebook that I'm going to create for um, a specific class um, so my specific class is going to be called advanced math 3 Okay, so I hit next. Okay, so the next thing that I have to decide is, uh, well, basically it just shows me uh, what I can do within this. Okay, so uh, this is kind of important for you to understand. You are able to have a collaboration space, whereas basically, um, a space where you can put contact up and both the teacher and the student can edit that information. Okay, so if you're going to give some kind of collaboration assignment, you can both edit this, the content. Um, if there is a content library, this is where only the teacher can edit it. So this is where I would put in my class notes or worksheets or things that I don't want the students to, um, to touch. Okay, and the last notebook is the student notebook. So this is something that the students are going to edit. So for example, I would create an assignment for them and then each student would do their assignment within the student notebook. And then I have access to this and I can see uh, the work that they have done. Okay, so once I have clicked the next, all I have to do is uh, I can possibly give another teacher permission so if I wanted to, if I have a co-teacher perhaps, that would be a space where I would add this. I don't have another teacher that teaches my same class, so I'm just going to click Next. Okay, and now this is where I'm going to add students. Okay, so um, I'm going to add a student, and this has got to be within your 365 account. So you can't just add random people. You have to add students that are within the system. So I'm going to uh, see if I can find just a mock student graduated. See if anything will come out. Um, uh, okay, so I'm going to pause it really quick while I uh, find a mock student to set this up with. Alright, so um, what I did is I just typed in a last name of a student and I just kind of went past that off the video so um, it's not posted online. So once you hit next, so you would just go through your role sheet, um, type in all the last names and, and they would be added on to, to this uh, 365 class count. Um, so now these are your, um, basically your different folders that you have. So um, I probably don't have quizzes. I like class notes. I probably wouldn't hand out um, handouts 
and then homework will be like worksheets. So I'm going to keep it down to uh, these two. So it's up to you how you want to do it. You could add more, such as, um, I don't know, maybe you want one just for worksheets. So uh, maybe I'll, yeah, that looks pretty good. So um, I'll hit next. Okay, so here is what it looks like from my end when I'm when I go down to my one and I'll show you this what it what it, you'll see from um, from your end and I'll even show you one that I've done in the past. So um, this is what we will see and then if you click over here, this is what the student sees. So there's the different um, spaces, so uh, they know how to navigate through. So you would have them put their stuff in these particular um, folders. Okay, so then I'm just going to hit create. And naturally I'm almost there. Alright, so um, that is all that I'm going to do from this end. And so now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close my online browser and I'm going to now go into my OneNote. Okay, so I use OneNote all the time, so I put it here on my toolbar. Um, I have already logged in, so if you haven't logged in before, you will need to log in. So either you'll be logged in here. Um, make sure that it is um, a Microsoft account. Okay, so this is kind of a tricky piece of using this is that the student and the teacher also have to have a separate personal Microsoft account. Okay, and that's the only way that they can log into uh, OneNote and use this efficiently. So in my opinion, that's a big hiccup in this whole setup. But um, once you set it up one time, you uh, you don't have to do it again. And so that that's okay. Um, so I have already linked my, my account. So this is my Gmail account um, linked to my other one. So uh, what I want to do is I want to op open up the the notebook, sorry, so this is I'm currently in my multi, multi notebook. Um, so these are all the notebooks that I have created. Um, these are just specifically ones that I've opened on this computer. So you can see that my advanced three is not on here. Okay, um, so what I need to do is I need to go into open other notebooks so that I can see all of the notebooks that I have created. And since I am an avid user of OneNote, I have a ton of notebooks. So your list will probably be a lot smaller than mine. Um, these are all of the notebooks that I created um, with my eNulti account. Um, but what you will need to do is you'll need to make sure that you are connected through... Uh, uh, you should have these two... Um, what is this called? SharePoint. This is what it's SharePoint. So if you don't have this on here um, and you're logged in through your whatever personal account, so I'm on, on my Gmail account, what you're going to have to do is you're going to add a place, okay, and you'll add a 365 SharePoint account. Students will have to do this as well, which is a pain to get in the rear end, but it, it, it is necessary. Okay, and then you'll have to type in your 365 account. So this is where I do eNulti at BelgradeSchools.com. Same thing with the kiddos. They're going to do at BelgradeSchools.com. Um, the password they're going to use is the one they, they type in just to log on to any computer, and it will link it. So once you have that done, I'm not going to do it because I already have it in, um, you can see anything that is connected to your 365. Oh, interesting. I have to sign in. So let me re-sign in. I guess I will have to do this. So I'm going to pause the video super fast while I type in my password. Okay, so uh, once I've logged in, basically I can see over here, I'm clicked on my OneDrive. And notice that it's different between OneDrive and Sites. So these are all of like your different SharePoints, and I don't have any SharePoints created. Uh, basically anything that you create 
in 365 will be saved in your OneDrive. Okay, so I'm going to open my OneDrive, and this is all the folders that I've ever saved to. So this is like um, just everything that I have. Um, but what I'm looking for is class notebooks. Okay, so when I cl click on class notebooks, these are all the class notebooks that I've created. Here is my advanced math three. So depending on how much you've used OneDrive and OneNote, you might have a lot of empty stuff. Um, so just be aware of that. So it's going to take a second to load this all up, um, especially if you have a lot of um, students within your class. So we'll just sit and let this load. All right, maybe I'll pause this since it might take. Okay, so once this is loaded, um, there's immediately some stuff that's kind of automatically downloaded into it. Okay, so um, this is kind of a welcome page for you and basically uh, different things that are tricks and training tools and a whole bunch of different stuff that you can use um, within your classroom and it kind of goes through how to do different things. Okay, so um, you can eventually delete this when you are ready because I don't think it's necessary for students to see this. Um, maybe put it into a different folder so they, or I don't know, maybe even just let them know that this is just uh, information. Um, but basically as the teacher, here are your different, your different uh, folders. Okay, so up here you have a collaboration space, so again, this is the place where you can put information and students can manipulate that. So um, if you put in or start writing on this, the students have access to it as well and they can also write on it. So uh, kind of be aware of that scenario. You can add different folders within this. So if you wanted to do, oh, this is chapter five and we're learning about insects. I'm not sure whatever you wanted to do. Um, so you just hit that up arrow. So this is content library. So within the content library, this is where you would put, or at least I would put notes um, and probably worksheets. So I might label one of my folders, uh, chapter one, and then over here are gonna be my pages for the different sections for students to go through and see. Um, and then here are my students. So I only put one student in here. And I think Austin might be okay with this. Um, so when I click on a student, these are the different things that he can uh, access. So he has class notes that he can put in. I can see any class notes that he's adding. Homework and worksheets. So if I assign the homework, he can put his homework here. And this is how I can receive it. And I can even correct it if I wanted to or respond back. Uh, however you would want to do that. Okay, so really a very cool thing. So I wanted to just quickly show you how I have set this up in the past. Um, this is, uh, let's see, this is very similar class to what I did last year. So my welcome page, um, I basically put uh, a link to my contact, uh, excuse me, an email, and then um, uh, my website where I put all of my videos and such so they're able to figure out what that is but uh, here would be the different um, folder folders excuse me folder so within a folder this would be like a chapter so each chapter and then like this is uh, transformation of functions and then the next section within this is then inverse functions sorry this takes a little bit so these are the little subsections or the pages of notes that I would have given in class. You can see my handwriting here off to the side that I use as I am actually giving notes. And so students have the ability to watch from a tablet or a computer or even their cell phone and watch instantaneously as I write on this and explain. Okay, so that's kind of a really super cool uh, thing. And then of course I input my worksheets very simple to put worksheets in here. Uh, kids can then copy and paste the worksheet into their own homework file. So you can see that I have a ton of different folders. So these are all my folders and then you see those collaboration space content library things. Um, I just 
didn't use my content library, I just put everything on the welcome page. Um, and I don't really have much to collaborate. But these are all my students who, if we clicked on one of these kiddos, um, you could go in and, of course, this doesn't work anymore, but uh, <laughs> you could go in and see exactly what homework they've done and, and um, even rate and respond back. So um, one, the next part of this, um, which I will create a separate video, is um, having the students set up their end of the OneNote. Okay, so it is definitely different for the setup for you, and then the setup for the students is just as tedious. Again, it takes time. It's not fun to do. Uh, but once you have it set up, you have that instantaneous um, response for information uh, between the two, between you and your students. So very valuable tool. But again, my my one thing is I wish OneNote or 365 um, connected to Microsoft accounts. Uh, so note to self, if you're going to use this, all of your students have to have a personal Microsoft account in order for this to work. So Microsoft accounts are free. Um, they just require any email um, to link to. So they would just have to be linked to an email and set up and uh, it does take a little while. If you're going to set this up at um, let's say a school district and you're going to take your kids to the lab one day and do this, be careful because um, Microsoft will limit the amount of kids that can create an account with on a network. Okay, so if you, um, I'm not sure what the number is, but I think it could be maybe 20 or so. Only 20 kids in one day can create a Microsoft account. So you might have to have them go home and do it as an assignment and then come back and set this up. Okay, so I hope that this was a helpful video. If you have questions or comments, let me know. Um, and good luck.